It's time to be positive. It's time to go to try to be positive. Come on, let's be positive, mate. No need to grump, no need to growl. Life is good. You know that. Come on. Let's be positive. Let's be Just it. stop right there. Let's be positive. No negativity. Positive. Let's positive. be positive. LBP. 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 Let's be positive. I love this part of the program. I've been working with this man a hell of a long time. I think in 2003 we got together, wasn't it, Matt? And that almost 20 years ago, or 20 years ago now because of the uh, Rugby World Cup. And I remember you were in Dunedin, my mate, and um, I was looking for a new producer. And I think Shunter had, uh, he was off to become a famous actor or a hobbit, I think it was, one of the two. And um, and I said, I wanted somebody who actually hated the All Blacks. That was my criteria. And you came in with just a baseball bat in your hands, mate. It was brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what, I think it worked out better for Shunter in the end, didn't it? <laughs> it Hobbit for life. Worked it right for Shunter. Mate, I'll tell you what he does Where these days. He gets paid hundreds of thousands of bucks a year to paint hairy toes on, fly up to Germany every couple yeah. of weeks, and go to some seminar where all these people from all over the world, all the weirdos who are absolutely addicted to Lord of the Rings, they come, he signs an autograph, he pretends he's bomb bore, that's his job, mate. He, he didn't do too bad. No, he did all right. He did all right. And what a fantastic weekend it was, Martin. I hope you're all positive like I'm positive. We're back into another Monday. No, no. And there's been so much happening. Let's so kick it off with the happening. Aussie stuff, mate. The women's rugby are back. You beat Scotland. The men, your league, you beat Fiji. Okay, you lost the netball. Was that the most important of the three? Uh, no, definitely the Wallaroos over Scotland was the most important. Okay. Re-establishing In your the credentials. context yes. of what we've got going on, Martin, I mean, let's be honest, a, a, a silly Constellation Cup... Or a Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Okay. Good point. You Good know point. what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm contextualising just how I'm feeling about it at the moment. Well, so, Matt, the Women's it. Rugby World Cup, where do you sit with it at the moment? I didn't watch it yesterday afternoon. I am obviously a misogynist and I'm anti-local sport. Those are two things I've been labelled because I just sat down and got it just absolutely addicted to the baseball going on yesterday and I couldn't leave it. It was just so bloody brilliant. As a consumer, I made a consumer choice. Later on in the tournament, I'll get with it, but these group games leave me a little bit cold in most of these tournaments. It's kind of like watching the Kiwis this morning against Lebanon. It's a bit of a warm-up, isn't it? Oh, it's a very hard sell. I mean, it's simple as that. I mean, the reality is, if people want to watch, they'll watch. Mm. I don't. I just don't. I just don't really think there's any reason to watch at the moment. You can't make a judgment yet. No. But I mean, if you can't get people to go, it's telling you something. And with the agenda pushed like it is. It feels like a failed marketing campaign. Yeah. If no one goes. Yeah, well, see, this, I'm pretty yeah. sure you could go on and buy a ticket to any game from, from here to the finish. Well, you can, and that is and that is the truth. Look, all around my suburb in Kingston, mate, the sport New Zealand, it's time. They've got billboards and posters up. Goodness knows how mm. much of our tax money went into this wasted campaign. Look, it is about eyeballs, and I'm trying to kind of get my head around the fact, before we talk about the NPC where they can't get a crowd, you got thirty five to 40,000 at Eden Park for the opener. Was that because there were three games? Was it because more it was an event rather than just a game of rugby? And for a lot of people, I bet they went along for the Rita Orr. Is that her name, Rita Orr concert? Rita Ora. Yeah, Rita sorry, Rita Ora. Ora. Sorry. A lot, some of them would. Some of them would have gone for her. And then you've got six nations in a multicultural city like Auckland, as well as Rita Ora, to draw a crowd. Yeah. So I would have expected at least that many people there. I mean, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a massive success. It's an event. People went to it. The tournament's got to be a success. But the tournament can only be a success if it is. You can't make it one because you want it to, and it feels good if everyone gets paid the same. At the end of the day, if no one watches, no one's getting paid the same. So it's a litmus test, Martin, as they say. It's not what we but, think it's doing. It yeah, is what it is. It is what it is. Having said that, you know, and this is what I can't stand about the way it has been rammed down our necks at the moment, that we're all meant to watch it. And, you know, if you, if you, you know, go to the News Hub site, the One News site, if you go to the two newspaper sites, it's all the same. You wouldn't think there's anything else happening in the world of sport at the moment. I find this patronising and I find it belittling to the athletes because if you ask any of those women that are actually playing, they want to be considered on an even playing field. They don't want this bollocks around, you know, puffing it up into something that it isn't. The Men's yeah. Rugby World Cup kicked off in a really low-key way in New Zealand in 87, and I know that they've had Women's World Cups up until now, but this is the first one here. You know, COVID and, and up until last year, man, they didn't know where the hell they were going to play it even. I mean, we were still in lockdown in Auckland. 
So you've got it north of the Bombays. So you're asking only a certain catchment of the population to be interested for a start because it's a bloody big ask to say, hey, I'm going to fly from Christchurch and come up and watch a couple of games, isn't it? Or from anywhere in the South Island or, or come from Wellington. People don't have the money. And they're offering the tickets cheap. But what we're seeing here, I think, is what we're seeing is we're seeing how much interest there is actually in it. Having said that, I believe that by the time the knockout round starts, semi-finals and final, you will see it. And if the Black Ferns make it at Eden Park, yeah. mate, it'll be a huge crowd. Well, I hope it is. It deserves to be. Yeah, right? same. I believe They've so. They've put on good tournament. But at the moment, it is kind of being reported as it should be a smashing success because of all the reporting. And it, it just is what it is. It, it, you know. Anyway, so well said. That's it. No, that's just so well said. I mean, you know, it is meant to be a success because we're saying it's a success. Therefore, it will be a success. And we're looking at the crowds. Today. Okay, let's go to Lebanon. Look, the Rugby League, the Rugby League World Cup. Mate, I'm still gobsmacked by Tor Samoa. I thought, hang on a second. I looked at their lineup. We were told they were the favourites versus England. What the hell happened, mate? No. Oh. Costo the other week, he talked up every island nation there was. Yeah. Didn't he? Mm-hmm. He gave everyone a chance. Yeah. He gave everyone a chance. And then I'll tell you what I found interesting about the Rugby League uh, reporting today is for most of the day, if you only heard the headline, you'd think that Lebanon had beaten the Kiwis. They scored first. Yeah. And then they'd do these stories saying Lebanon scored first. The game was over. <laughs> yes, they scored first, but there was somewhat of a comeback. Yeah, there was. By this point, I thought, who are they trying to, t- who are they trying to tell about these stories? Like, the story's been on for three hours. The yeah. game's over. The game's over. Hey, I tell you what they did. Lebanon man. scored first. Yeah, but okay, then might happen. Yeah, but they might happen. Yeah, but they might Whatever. Happen. Yeah. Early days again. Yeah. Okay. So that and this is it again. You know, the reporting is trying to make something of it that's not because you know most people when they see a headline, the Kiwis beat Lebanon, will go, okay, well, what sport was it in? You know what I mean? Yeah, I have this sort of problem at work. You know, doing a small community newspaper, you've got to come up with headlines, right? Yeah. You don't want clickbait headlines. It's a community newspaper. But you want a catchy headline. Mm-hmm. But what we've ended up with, Martin, and this is why the platform's done uh, as well as it has so early, is we, we, we're we not reporting on what happens as such. We're reporting on what you think should be happening, yeah. or at least from the side you're on. We, we, we're not reporting on the event. The event is this. The Rugby World Cup's on. Not many people are going. We hope to sell tickets at the end. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, but, like, that's but, the no, but, 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 but yeah, but I mean, yeah, but what has truth got to do with it, mate? Because that's not how these the mass the mass media does it these days. They don't do truth, mate. Because if they do truth, they'd be sitting there telling each other they're all being negative as opposed to being real. I just hate this patronising yeah. way of treating your audience, and that's what I mean. I believe it's a patronising way of treating the athletes. The athletes are running out there, Matt. They know if there's 5,000 people there. The the Wellington Lions, you know, the last three games, okay, you've got a you've got a, a Ranfilly Shield defence, haven't had the Shield in 20 years, no one turns up, 3,000 people. You get a quarterfinal against Hawke's Bay, no one turns up, 4,000 people. You get a semi-final versus Auckland, the old enemy, 4,000 people turn up. Those players know that nobody's coming to watch, mate. You can sell it whatever way you want to. You can sprinkle it with sugar if you want, but no one's turning up. They're terrible crowds. You can't run a business in that manner. I mean, they'll tell you that. They'll, they'll know 100%. These are losing fixtures. But the point is, they don't tell people to go. They don't sell it. We've just been talking about selling the Women's Rugby World Cup and how much of a success it should be. Is that how you feel that provincial rugby's treated? They don't even really want people to go do that. No. They're probably losing money on it. Well, It'd be if, better off if people stayed at home. Opening the stadium must cost more than what those 4,000 ticket holders pay. Must do. Everyone must. I can't well, see the caterers I mean, making everything any money. Else you pay. Yeah, well, yeah. You've just, you know, by the time you um, bring in the security and all the other people that aren't needed, you've got all the food, all the contractors, all the volunteers, the ball boys. You've got St John's Ambulance. But they don't tell people to go. I mean, if you're going to sell it, you've got to sell it. You got to sell it as the next big thing. Yes, the best thing since sliced bread. Yes, like yeah, English Premier League don't promote them so like some C grade league, you know, from from Antarctica. Like every every ad, every promo, boom, bang, bing. You know what you're going to get. 
So what, how, how do you promote the NPC when they don't support it and they don't care about it? So that's why no one goes. Yeah, <laughs> They don't talk about it like it's a good competition anymore. No one goes because they believe the advertising that doesn't exist. Let's it's pretty be... straightforward. They're all idiots. They've lost the game there. Yeah, well, in Wellington, they you certainly know, that's have. That's where it starts. Well, and when you when the head office is in Wellington and your MPC side down there can't get a crowd and is doing as well as it can, if no one in New Zealand rugby is pulling their head out of the ostrich pit and actually saying, we've got a serious issue going on here. I mean, I, but you know that they won't be. Let's finish with let's be positive about your Liverpool side, mate. And it's not very often I do this. And, you oh. know, when it's Man City versus Liverpool, the only result I want is a nil-all draw and a terrible game. But the fact that City lost, I like it that every now and again, you know, these teams like the Dodgers and the and they've and Man City, they've got to be told that you can't buy every single player in the place. Sometimes it doesn't work. And this morning was one of those times. Oh, eighth over second says it all. We've been average. And then we just rose to the cream of the crop. I mean, essentially, the way you've spoken about Man City, you and Lockwood, we've just beaten the title holder. Yeah. So we're we're in this we're in this competition still. This is the beauty. People don't realise the real significance of that victory. We've shown the rest of the competition the way. Yeah, you have. Well we've shown it the way, even though Arsenal leads obviously the uh Arthur Lisa, yeah, Arthur does, yeah, but yeah. And and you tip every loser in town pretty much. <laughs> what happened this morning was just it was a wake up call, wasn't it? You tip every loser in town. I just hate the, what do you have to do truth? What do you have to bring truth to the argument? What do you have to bring fact to every discussion? Tell, listen, the other thing is, Martin, the, the real the clear winners this weekend, Ireland. A strong early start to the rugby league world cup, forty eight two over three Jamaican ex boss letters. <laughs> Where did their rugby league team come from? <laughs> oh, oh, it's hard sell, isn't it? Let's be positive out of twice with Matt. Love you to bits, mate. We'll be back again next Monday.